uh, the recorded version of this lecture for uh, the for for the use of those who will not be able to attend our session for uh, today. So before we start, may we have an opening prayer to be led by Richard David De Ocampo. Richard, please lead us the opening prayer. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day, for another meeting that we are going to tackle our lessons. May you guide us and send your Holy Spirit within us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good afternoon. Um, welcome to... Uh, welcome to our last session, last uh, Google Meet session prior to the prelim examination, which is set uh, tomorrow. And your exam is scheduled uh, 1.30 at 3, uh, 1.30 to 3, no? 1.30 to 3 on Thursday, okay? So I hope that you already have started reviewing uh, the learning contents for prelims and that you also have helped yourself through looking for additional resources so for you to fully understand uh, the lesson we've been discussing in this course. So for today, we will continue our discussion as regards performance-based assessment. As I have said, okay, the content of uh, the presentation of the PowerPoint presentation is a summary of uh, the two chapters, okay, the two chapters uh, being uploaded in uh, the NEO LMS course. And uh, uh, then after that, we will also be discussing about uh, uh, we will we will we will be discussing about uh, the steps. Okay, the steps in doing uh, uh, in designing should I say in designing tasks? Okay, for performance based assessment or performance based learning task. Then of course after our discussion on the steps. We also proceed to our discussion of the GRASPS model, okay, by Grant Wiggins and Jay Makti. Then after discussing the GRASP model, I'll be presenting to you, okay, a glimpse of uh, the prelim examination, the different test types that you have to consider, that you have to be oriented of so that uh, you will be equipped of the appropriate prep preparation prior to the major examination. Also, I would like to congratulate those who got good scores in the second quiz, in the 30-item quiz uh, yesterday. I think there were some who got a perfect score. There were also some who got 29 out of 30, and the others have uh, a considerably um, good scores for the said uh, quiz. So I hope that your score would certainly measure, would certainly speak of the kind of student, the kind of students, uh, the kind of students you are, uh, that uh, you really have prepared well, you really have reviewed your lessons well, and you really have listened to our discussions and read the learning content as uploaded in the new LMS okay, prior to uh, the said quiz. So I hope that for those who got good scores, will continue getting good scores, especially for the major examinations and the succeeding uh, performance-based tasks that you would be doing in this course, okay? Uh, David, a while back, uh, raised his hand. Richard, did you raise your hand a while back? Sir, napindot lang po. Okay, sorry. Okay, so may we now have our discussion, the continuation of our discussion as regards performance-based assessment. So allow me to share this presentation. Okay, so we now proceed to the different steps in conducting performance-based tasks. Please do not confuse yourself as performance-based tasks, okay, are similar with performance-based assessments. 
as we always said, all learning tasks that we as students do, that we do inside our classroom, whether it's virtual, face-to-face, uh, -face, or whatever learning modality it is, okay, we are referring to assessment tasks also. Because as we have said, learning and assessment are supposed to be inseparable because it's through the latter that the former is being measured. It is through assessment that we, we could learn whether there's indeed learning among our students or among our pupils or learners. So uh, in the first part of our discussion for today, we will be dealing, we, we would be dealing with the different steps okay, on how to design tasks for performance-based assessments. As I have said, as I, we have noted, prior to the formal, formal start of today's discussion, we have noted that um, these steps okay, would summarize okay, the learning content provided in lessons two and three in our NEO LMS course. So there are six steps involved in designing tasks for performance-based assessment. Allow me to enumerate these uh, steps, then afterwards we will be tackling each of these as we go through with um, the presentation for today. The first step is specifying the performance outcomes. So what do we mean by outcomes? We will be dealing into we will be dealing about that okay, as we progress. Second step after identifying and specifying the performance outcomes, we select the focus of the assessment, whether it's an assessment of process, assessment of product, okay, or assessment of problem solving. Though we said that problem solving may fall under process-oriented performance-based assessment. So after identifying or selecting the focus, whether it's a process or a product or both, because there are instances that there are instances that the performance task uh, is both a product and a process. There are many instances of that. Then after that, we select the degree of realism to check whether um, the task, okay, the process or the product is really uh, um, the process or the product really represents the reality. And David said last meeting, it's about the context of reality of the learners. Then after selecting, the, after looking at the degree of realism of the tasks, whether it's a product or process or both, okay, we now select the performance situation. Uh, later we'll explain that. What kind of, what kind of assessment, what form of assessment shall we make use so that the process and product could be achieved or could be completed by the learners or students. And after looking into deciding on the performance situation, we have to check the authenticity of the task, whether the task is authentic or not. If it's not authentic, then we have to do something to convert it or to make it uh, authentic or very authentic. Then after looking or after enduring the authenticity of the task, it's the time that we select methods of observing, recording, and scoring, okay, or assigning scores, assigning evaluative feedbacks to students' output of process and product or both. So these are the six simple steps in designing tasks for performance-based assessment. Now we proceed to each of these steps. Okay, the very first thing that we have to do is to specify or be particular with okay, the learning outcomes or performance outcomes. What do we like them do? That is about the outcomes. What do we like our students do as they go through doing the tasks, whether it's a process or a product or both? So we start first with drafting or specifying our learning outcomes. In our discussion in assessment of learning one, we said, that there's a difference. There's a difference. Should I say sorry? There's a difference between uh, learning objectives and learning outcomes. Learning objectives may may or may not be achieved at the end of the lesson or even during the lesson. But for learning outcomes, it has to be achieved by the learners. Learning objectives is is directed towards the activities of the teacher. What teach? What 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 will teachers be doing as they go through discussing the unit of study. 
So objectives are for teachers, while 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 outcomes are for students. We said in our in our in our course last semester that the formula in writing learning outcomes is learning objectives plus the learning tasks equals the learning outcome. So uh, when we cite learning outcomes or performance outcomes, it has to make use of verbs still. Okay, it has to make use of verbs still, but we couple it with the actual task that students would be doing to meet or to achieve the said objectives. That's what we call as the learning outcomes, similar with performance outcomes. And in this slide, it presents to us, this slide presents to us examples of verbs used in learning outcomes. So for example, measure, mark, construct, identify different parts of Microsoft, for example, draw a figure, design a model of a building, demonstrate, perform, recite, write a research report, create, and others. So these are examples of clear verbs okay, to start our performance outcomes. Okay? Again, as we have said, outcomes have to be written in a smarter way. Okay, you know what smart means and you know what, what ER, the additional letters, would mean. E for engagement and R for responsiveness or relevance. Okay, so when we say engagement, that the activity would sustain the interest of our students. Okay, that the activity would sustain the interest of our students so that they would keep doing and they would keep progressing themselves towards the attainment of the learning outcome while uh, by doing or completing the said activity. And when we say responsiveness, responsiveness, we're referring to the relevance of the learning outcome or tasks. That relevance would mean that it has to target the interests or the differences or the diversity of learners we have inside our classroom. Okay, so these are examples of performance outcomes. Later, uh, I, I, later we, we will have a summary of how to do task designing for performance-based assessment using the GRASPS model. Now, we proceed to second step on selecting okay, the focus of assessment. Okay? It's either uh, process, product, or both. How to assess the process? Okay, assessing the process. If the PBA or performance-based assessment results in a product, because there are processes, there are learning processes okay, that the end would be a product, that the result would be a production of a certain learning product to testify that indeed they did the process. So the teacher might want to assess procedure in the beginning, for example, identifying different apparat apparatus or apparatuses. So before we ask our students to produce something out of the experiment, maybe we have to let them or give them the opportunity to demonstrate how they know the different equipment to be used for the experiment. Okay, that is a process-based, uh, process-oriented, performance-based assessment. Sometimes, the, PP, the PBA that results in a complex performance can also be broken down to assessment at this level. For example, the first two weeks of a PE class may focus on running, jumping resistance, and others prior students or prior letting students to prior to letting students uh, play, uh, play a certain sports or a certain game. They have to, they have to do all these prerequisites first in the first two weeks para nang sa ganun meron silang preparation or physical preparation prior to their engagement uh, prior to their engagement in any sports activities or in any sports activity should i say okay so what do we mean by assessing the process when we say the, uh, when we say process uh, you have to check whether the activity that you would ask them do based on your performance uh, performance outcome would require them demonstrate their understanding or would require them produce something out from their understanding Okay, now how about assessing the product? Sometimes we are interested in the product because the process may be many, not clearly identifiable. For example, okay, when you would ask students to create a collage, a, a collage uh, to summarize the conceptual understanding about a certain concept, about a certain unit of study, then, then the process of doing the collage may no longer be important to, to you because the, the product itself is the most important thing. The result of uh, the, the, the completion of the product, because the completion of the product of the collage would testify or would evidence how far they have understood the concepts or big ideas being discussed or being taught by you in the, inside the classroom. So that's what we call as, okay, there are 
okay there are uh, there, there are tasks which are both process and product but we don't we don't put too much focus already on the process because it's not that important as an evidence of learning because the product is the most important uh, is, is better to testify okay how far the students have understood or have learned about the concept okay another example of this is solving a word problem okay sometimes teachers in math would no longer would no longer would no longer care about about the solution as long as students would be able to find the correct answer in a word problem then that's already a good then, then that would mean that the product is more important than the process okay or throwing a discuss a, a discuss or discuss throwing discuss throw okay it's already how far okay that's a product how far that student okay that student uh have thrown okay the said uh equipment over the process of throwing the said equipment or sports equipment or long jump and others so there are products which are more important to evidence learning than processes but of course there are also learning tasks that processes are very important to testify how learning has been uh, has been learned by how how learning has been imbibed among learners for example uh, you are education students, and if I would ask you, if I would ask you to, if I would ask you to write or to prepare a learning plan or a lesson plan, okay, then I would say that both are important, okay. The process of doing it and the output itself are very important uh, evidences of learning, okay. So yun naman yung pag both product and process, okay. Any any question on this? Did I explain it well? Did I explain this part well? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we, we continue. Then after the second step, uh, for example, uh, after the second step, should I say, we now select, okay, the appropriateness or the degree of realism of that activity. As we have said, when we say degree of realism, it's about the transferability of the task in the daily life experiences of our learners. When we say realism or degree of realism, it's about the usability, okay? The usability or applicability of such a skill, that, of the skills that students would be learning when they do that activity to their daily life experiences. That's what we call as degree of realism. For example, in a business class about earnings, okay? About earnings or about savings, for example, okay? If you would just merely ask students to compute, okay? this the first one this one then this is this has the lowest level of realism but if you would provide them a word problem about earnings okay then this is better this is more realistic than the first one determine earnings in a principle of 40 dollar with monthly interest rate of six percent more realistic than the first but we can make we can we can even improve the realist the, the how realistic this task is by letting them create a chart of earnings for 12 months more realistic than the second. Okay, yung earnings nila per, ano, per month. Okay, they are to create a chart on that. Or to make it more realistic, managing a bank account with fake dollars, for example, is higher than the third. But we can even, uh, we can even convert this with high realism by managing a real bank account with money earned through class tasks. Okay, so remember that saving and earning is a life skill. This is economic literacy. Uh, financial literacy, should I say. Okay, financial literacy. And financial literacy is one of the life skills that every student in the 21st century has to learn. Okay? Ito yung sabi ko, yung, 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 yung pagkakalapat ng, pagkakalapat ng kakayahang matutunan nila sa paggawa ng nasabing gawain pagkatuto na maaaring magamit nila sa pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. That's what we call as degree of realism. Okay? Uh, binanggit natin ito noon, noon uh, uh, ito noon. Okay? Now, um, we proceed to, then aside from that, should I say, the level of realism of a learning tasks, okay, depends on the following. First, it would always depend on, of course, on the, uh, on the learning outcome, this is learning outcome supposed to be 
on the learning outcome or learning objective, but we make use of the learning outcome as a term. Okay. It would always depend on the, the degree of realism of the activities we ask our students to do would depend first on the learning outcome. Okay. And the learning outcome more. Okay. Reviewing your learning outcome will also determine, okay, how will you, okay, what activities will you ask your students do to meet such outcome? So if your learning outcome could easily be assessed using a paper and pencil test, then let it be, let, let it be that paper and pencil test will be used if it would already measure, okay, that learning outcome. Number, number two components of the overall skills require, uh, overall skills required may be satisfied satisfy with the paper and pencil test. For example, identifying the different parts of a microscope before learning to operate it. Pwede ka namang gumawa ng paper and pencil test through identification part, labeling part, and others. Okay? So, kung yan lang naman ang skill to identify the different parts of a microscope, then pwede naman si, pwede naman si, ano, pwede naman si, si paper and pencil test, kung identification lang naman. Okay? Pero kung familiarity with the different parts, ang, 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 ang goal mo, Okay, ang skill na gusto mong matutunan nila, hindi lang identification skill, but familiarity skill. Then, kailangan mo ng actual microscope. Okay, ng actual microscope. Kung gusto mong ipa-familiarize sa kanila, o ipa-iunawa na mabuti sa kanila, o, ipa, o, o ituro sa kanila ang itsura talaga ng bawat bahagi o bawat parte ng isang, ng isang microscope. Okay? Number three. Practical constraints may prohibit the teacher from doing a full-scale performance-based assessment. For example, creating a bank account may not be feasible sa mga estudyante, lalo na't wala pa silang sariling trabaho and others. So, pwede siguro na i-consider mo yung ibang degree ng realism instead of requiring them to do a bank account, lalo na kung estudyante pa lang sila. So, these are all constraints that we have to consider as teacher. For example, gusto mong, gusto mong matuto sila ng, gusto mong matuto, gusto mong, gusto mong, Ma, ma, ano, gusto mong makita nila kung ano yung nasa ilalim ng ilog halimbawa, papalangoyin mo ba sila sa ilog para makita nila kung ano yung sa loob? This may be too dangerous for our learners lalo na kapag mga, ang mga minor ang mga sidyante mo. So tignan mo yung pinakamalapit na safe pa rin, pinakamalapit na realidad na safe pa rin yung mga sidyante mo. Okay? For example, maybe Okay, I'll, I'll just have to up, I just have to download from YouTube. Okay, a video of a, a video of a dive a, a, a video. Okay, a, a, a video um, showing okay the showing the ecosystem okay under the river instead of asking my students to swim. Okay, at tignan yung ilalim nung nung ano nung nung ilog. Okay, that would be risky to them. Okay? Number four, the task may not allow for realism to be created. For example, magpa-mouth to mouth resuscitation ka ba para ituro sa kanila kung paan, uh, magpa-mouth to mouth resuscitation ka ba dun sa mismong tao, kung yung totoong tao na nahimatay, nang sa ganun may ituro sa kanila kung how to save life? Maybe that, that may be, that may be an issue in Catholic schools or even in some schools. So better to make it of a dummy, for example. Okay? And others. Okay? So, tignan mo lang yung pinakamalapit na realidad. Kung hindi posible at merong mga issue or ethical issue at merong security issues or safety issues, then tignan mo yung pinakamalapit na realidad na kaya ng mga mag-aaral mo para magawa yun ang sabing uh, gawain pagka dito. Next, we now select the performance situation. What do you mean performance situation? Yung mga forms of assessment na pwede mo nang gamitin Okay, for you to check whether students, uh, for, for students to be able to do or to be able to achieve the performance outcome or learning outcome. For the learning objectives or outcomes decided earlier, the teacher may select from the following. So, pwede si paper and pencil performance, pwede si identification test, pwede si structured performance test, simulated performance, work sample, extended research project. So, let's look at each one of these, including examples. Now, for paper and pencil, so, before they start a school year, the coach may be interested in whether students know the various positions in the court. This is still a performance-based assessment. Okay? But only that, the performance-based assessment or tasks is done through a paper and pencil test. That you would ask students, okay, you would ask students 
to okay to to know the various positions in the court through maybe uh magdo-draw sila ng isang court basketball court para alam nila yung mga positions and others okay pwede yun that is still a performance based assessment because it requires students to demonstrate their knowledge as regards the various positions in the court through uh through um through a visual activity and that is drawing okay another he or she may ask students to create a layout of the basketball court and draw the location with different team members on court. So, pwede yun. Or before they handle expensive instruments, for example, in music, students might have to demonstrate their knowledge in various parts of the instrument via paper and pencil test. For example, labeling the different parts of the instrument or labeling uh, labeling or yeah, labeling the different instruments. Kung alam nila yung mga instruments na ito. Okay? That is still a performance-based assessment done through paper and pencil test. Di ba maalala niyo yung previous discussion natin, yung nakaraang talakayan natin na pinakita natin isang multiple choice test, marami ang pagpilihan, uh, mar marami ang pagpilihan pagsasulit, na, 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 na ginagawa pa rin ang performance-based assessment. Only that it's through paper and pencil test. Nakadepende sa pamamaraan ng pagkakatanong mo, pamamaraan, pamamaraan na gagawin nila gamit ang paper and pencil test para makita natin kung talaga ito by performance-based assessment o hindi. Okay. Now, how about identification test? This is still performance-based test, pero identification test siya. Identify the different pictures related to basketball. So, pakita ka ng picture halimbawa, okay, ng, ng mga basketball equipments and others. Uh, equipment, should I say. Okay? Tapos, i-identify ng sudyante kung ano yung picture na pinapakita mo. That is still performance test. Why performance test? Because you, still, you are still asking students, requiring students to demonstrate their knowledge as regards the topic. Or identify the various sounds made by different instruments. Okay, nakukuha ka ng recorded, ano, recorded, uh, recorded uh, sound ng different musical instruments. If you play mo, to say identify naman si Jante mo, that is still a performance-based assessment. Because that is demonstration of the mastery of the sounds produced by the different musical instruments. Next, identify the different types of leaves that can be toxic, harmful before going on a field trip. This is also a performance-based assessment. Okay? Because you're checking, uh, you're checking students' understanding of the different types of leaves. Next, identify the best sentence from a list of different sentences. Still, this is a performance-based assessment because there's demonstration of understanding or demonstration of knowledge or things they have learned as regards, uh, as regards the content being taught to them inside the classroom. Okay? Next, another example, structured performance test. Okay? Elements of a larger performance. This is the largest performance among the different types, uh, among the different forms of assessment because you would really be asking students to be involved in a certain performance activity. Okay, for example, running a half length of the court while dribbling the ball and executing a jump shot, okay, in a basketball, for example, is an example of a structured performance test. But the only, the only thing about structured performance test is this, it, it becomes a bit time consuming it also requires detailed directions on how students would be doing the structured performance test. And also, grading also calls for judgment. So, criteria for grading need to be set up ahead of time. For example, is posture important when you assess, assess the performance? Is type of grass important? To what extent can students write outside the line before they are deemed to be failing? How many words do they need to write, for example, in a structured performance test? Is time or speed important and others? Okay. So when we ask students to do a highly performance-based test, a highly performance-based test, it would really require us to think, uh, to make use of so much time to think of the criteria or success indicators in order for us to assign scores or evaluate the kind of learning or the kind of learning performance of our students, structured performance test, or simulated performance. Okay, I mean, this is simulated. Maybe an example of this is internet computer programs to simulate basketball, internet computer programs to simulate banking, or pretend a grocery store and others. Okay, any simulated performance, this is not a real performance, but a simulated one or simulation. So, maybe it's a simulation. Simulation, uh, you learned this in at Tech 1, diba? A simulation. Have you learned this in at Tech, at tech 1? Yes, sir. Uh, ano ibig sabihin ng simulation, Jobert? Jobert? Hello, hello. Hello. Ano ibig sabihin ng simulation? 
sir, if we say simulation, sir, you imitate or copy the okay. uh, realities or exact scenarios, sir. Okay. Halimbawa, yung animation ng solar system, di ba? Uh, animation video ng digestive system and others, these are all simulated performances. Of course, you cannot ask your students, for example, in biology, okay, for example, to to bring a human person, okay, cut or okay, cut the, the chest of that human person and uh, check the different parts of the digestive system. Now, we cannot do that. Of course, yung, yung pwede lang dun sa degree ng realism. So, pwede si, halimbawa, ano, pwede simulated, pwede yung video or animation as regards to the digestive system and others. Okay? Next, extended research project may also do. Any project you assign to students should follow the following steps of criteria. Research project. But before we ask students to be engaged into any research project, we have to be uh, educated or we, we have to be knowledgeable of the different steps in making use of extended research project. First, we establish the criteria and standards for performance. We orient them of the criteria of the rubric before we ask them to do the performance. Then we help them select and state the problem. We guide them on how they are to identify the problem as regards uh, the research project that they need to do in our class. And we give them or help them locate and select resources for the project, for the research project, and provide guidance in writing the report and help design and complete the product. As much as possible, we have to guide our students in doing the research because the feedback we give them would be very important so for them to be able to produce a good research project Okay, when they are guided fully, when they are guided or directed by the teacher. Okay, now after doing the degree of realism, after after identifying the performance situation, this is now the time that we have to check, okay, whether the activity is authentic or not. We check the authenticity of the activity. Okay, uh, what do you mean by authenticity? To check whether the activity is relevant. When we say relevance, we explained that uh, we explained that before. It has to be responsive to the needs, interests, and diversity of our learners. Why, why it has to be relevant? So that it would become more motivating. And if it's more motivating, okay, meaning to say, we allow our meaning to say it, it's engaging. It's engaging because students find the value. Or connection or connectedness of that task to their their personal experiences. Next is it it has to encourage real world skills. Ito yung sa applicability ng realism din ito and transfer to real world. It has to be complex and if and if performance tasks are complex or authentic assessment tasks are complex, then that would mean that it would require employment or utilization of higher level thinking or HOTS or higher order thinking skills. And if it would allow students to make use of their higher order thinking skills, then this would help them okay, towards a real understanding of the big ideas or big concepts you discuss in class. Okay, So all of these are the characteristics of an authentic assessment that every teacher like you have to consider, has to consider in identifying or checking the authenticity of a certain performance-based task. Now, after that, okay, tapos na, no? After that, we can now decide on how to evaluate, okay, these uh, learning tasks or performance tasks by selecting the method of observing, recording, and scoring the product or process or both. And there are four uh, ways on how to do this. It's either we make use of systematic observation and anecdotal records, we make use of checklists, we make use of rating scales, or we make use of scoring rubrics. We will discuss each of these. The first one is systematic observation and anecdotal records. Okay. So, when, when or if students are working on a project in class, teachers are often informally observing. Tama yun. We informally observe learners while they are doing the project. But instead of merely observing, maybe it might, maybe it might be good that we write notes on specific events okay, that we observe 
while students are are on their on task activity when you say on task activity they're currently doing okay the tasks you required of them okay for example this uh recording or writing unusual cooperation by students descriptions of areas where students had the most difficulty the mga, mga usual tanong nila about the activity okay and when you write all of these, these are called now the anecdotal records. Anything about learners that you observe inside the classroom and that you observe while they are on their own task behavior and you have written all of these, these are called anecdotal records. And when we do anecdotal recording, we have to focus on meaningful incidents, only for meaningful incidents. You don't have to record everything. The, the student... Uh, the student immediately seated when 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 I asked them to work in teams and others. You don't need to write all of those. You don't need to write that kind of observation. Only those which are meaningful. What in my meaningful incidents? Those that would help you decide later on what kind of strategies would be most appropriate, would be most fitting for the kind of learners that you have. You just write observations as regards the learners that would affect your decision as regards the way they learn as regards the strategies that you, might, you, you would use so to affect learning okay, to these kind of students. So for example, a student is not really cooperative, okay, not listening to suggestions of others in, uh, in, in his or her team, then maybe you record that because that observation would help you later decide whether you still make use of cooperative learning for that student or you might consider uh, giving him or her an independent study, independent activity, or yeah, independent activity that he or she could work, okay, could 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 specially work individually. Write them up so uh, soon after the incident. If you observe it immediately, uh, if you observe it already, then immediately you have to record it because there might be time na makalimutan mo, uh, makalimutan mo na kung ano nakita mo doon sa estudiante. And of course, if it's a meaningful incident, you write enough detail to make sense of it later. And keep judgment interpreters separate from this. Do not publicize your anecdotal records to the whole class because that may, may that may that will certainly be a very humiliating, a very humiliating uh, uh, experience for the student involved. So as much as possible, we just have to make use secretly of that anecdotal record to improve the way you provide learning strategies for that for the learner for the learner uh, for the learner which serve a subject of your anecdotal record. Okay, so that's what we call a systematic observation or anecdotal record. It's about checklist contains elements, steps. Okay, sequentially listed with a yes or no. Okay, so there are there are there are, um, there are statements. You just have to check whether the student uh, did it or not, yes or no, and others. Okay. If only we have time, then I might I might be asking you to create a sample checklist. But because this is our last meeting prior to the planning exam, uh, we need not, we I need not to ask you to do that. Okay, the checklist. Next, we also have um, after checklist, you might also want to make use of rating scales. How about rating scales? Uh, can be used to assess process and or product. For example, this one. Okay, arrives late for class, you just have to uh, check whether it's never, sometimes, often, always, daydreams, does sloppy work and others. So all these things are examples, these, these are examples of a behavior rating scale, which you may later use in the effective uh, assessment tasks, okay, uh, in our next chapter. Okay, this is an example of rating skills. We also have rubrics. We need not to discuss about the rub about rubrics because these, uh, these types of rubrics have already been discussed to you in your assessment of learning one. Of course, we will just have to provide a summary of that. But there are two types, analytical and holistic, or analytic or holistic rubrics. Holistic is also called global rubrics. Analytic, because much like checklists, they explain the number of points assigned to each statement. You add up the points to assign a grade. Uh, analytic rubric is the, is the most difficult type of rubric to be constructed. Ang hirap gawin nito because uh, because there are, there are general descriptors followed by specific descriptors, meron pang success indicator, meron pang points, meron pang numerical value, qualitative value, or descriptive value, and others. It's analytic rubric. Then we also have holistic or global rubric. Based on the general rating, you can assign writing categories of 4, 3, 2, 1. Ganun lang kasimple. You don't have to take down the, 
the general descriptors into specific descriptors. Okay, but please take note that analytical is helpful for formative, holistic is helpful for summative. So it's a major requirement. It's okay that you make use of the holistic rubric, but if it's a, a uh, but if it's a requirement within or in the duration of the of the course, then you make use of an analytic rubric, especially if you would like students or you would give the opportunity for students to improve their learning product or learning process. Okay, that is for rubric. So these are the different steps, okay, uh, that we have to follow when we do uh, when we do task designing for performance-based assessment. So before we continue, okay. Mm -hmm. We open the floor now for uh, question and answer for qualificatory questions or any supplement as regards our discussion. Okay, any supplement or any clarificatory questions that you might want to ask? Any question? Yes, uh, Joffrey. Sure, I, um, I, just, I just want to ask Sir Yung Kwan, Sir, the difference between yung degree of realism and yung authenticity or degree of authenticity of a certain task. That's a good question. Okay, Joe, uh, for, for, for the sake of everyone, no? That's a good question by Joe. But sir, what's the difference now of degree of realism and the authenticity of the authenticity of the of the activity or the learning tasks. Kung nakikita ninyo ang pinagkaiba ng dalawa, si authenticity, pareha, si authenticity and realism ay parehas when it comes to they are they are they are similar when it comes to the transferability, okay, the transferability or even the applicability of the tasks to the daily life experiences of the learners to the context of reality, okay, of the learners, okay? They are similar well, as regards that. The only difference is for authenticity, it has to be something, okay, it has to be something that caters to the diversity, to the diversity of our learners. It has to target, okay, it has to target the, uh, it has to target, okay, the learning style of our students, that's authenticity. It also has, it, it, the activity has to target also the interest of the students. And that has to be done so that students will be well engaged, will be well engaged to the activity or towards the completion of the activity or the learning tasks. That's one difference. Another difference is, if the if the degree of realism would only talk about the applicability and the transferability of the task to so the daily life experiences of the learners authentic assessments or authentic uh, the authenticity of uh, of a performance based assessment refers to um refers to the refers to the uh, complexity of the tasks meron kasi mga performance based assessment na hindi siya complex na isang skill lang ang kailangan. Pero meron mo, ang authentic activities ay would require complex skills or complex tasks. Di ba maalala nyo dun sa lesson 2, I think. It's in lesson 2, no? Yung pinagkaiba ng simple competencies and complex competencies. Okay, example of a simple competency na performance-based assessment. Shooting. Okay. It's a performance-based assessment. When you ask students to merely shoot the ball, okay, to merely shoot the ball in a PE class, then that is a performance-based assessment. But it's a simple competency. What's the competency? Merely the shooting. Okay, isang skill lang. But when we say authentic, it's more of a set of skills that they need to, they need to demonstrate. When you would already ask students to dribble, then after dribbling, they have to, uh, they have to do the lay, uh, the, the laying, di ba? Meron sa basketball yung, yung you lay, di ba? Then you shoot the ball, then that requires complex competencies. 
That is what we call as authentic assessment. Okay, yung po yung pinagkaiba niya. Performance-based assessment, okay, would merely deal with simple, okay, simple, may mga performance-based assessment na simple uh, competency lang. Pero sa authentic, it has to be always complex. Okay, pero hindi ko sinasabi na hindi higher order thinking skills etong si, etong si degree of realism. Only that, Okay, it requires really demonstration of knowledge, whether it's simple competency to be demonstrated or complex competency to be demonstrated. Okay? Claro, Jovert? Yes, sir. Okay. So an another example, in social studies, if you would ask students to merely, to merely create, to merely create a... Uh, to merely create a campaign, a diversity campaign, the, a diversity campaign uh, brochure, okay, then that is performance-based assessment, simple competency. But if you would ask them first to do a research, okay, nagpa-research ka muna on how, uh, or nagpa-research ka muna kung paano maging effective yung kanilang diversity campaign bago sa mag-develop ng material for diversity campaign, that requires complex skill and that is very authentic. Okay. Any more question? Uh, Jinky, you might want to ask. Almira, Oscar, Romulo, Romel, jo Lover Neil, Jamar, Maria, Jessamine, Jamila, Wendy, and others. Rosa, Isaiah, Mary, Benjamin, Jean Marie, Annabelle, you might want to ask. There are 23 students in class. Okay, no more question? Sir, chronological order ba yun? Alin yun? Ano chronological? Step by step? Ah, uh -uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, yun yung steps niya. Uh, that's, so a that's a standard step. Okay, pero... Doon sa last part ng discussion natin later, gawa, gawi, gamitin natin yung grass model kasi mas simplified siya at mas may guide kayo kung paano gumawa. Okay? Tuturo ko mamaya kung paano ulit. Doon ay turo na natin yung assessment of learning one. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, Jobins. About the others? Gising pa naman kayo, no? So, um, sir, can close lang naman. Ay. Ano? Ay. Jobins, ano? Sir, wala lang ko practice lang. Wow. Oscar, okay ka lang, Oscar? Yes, sir. Okay lang, sir. Okay. Naka-formal attire ka ba ngayon? Wala, sir, hindi. Akala ko formal attire. Akala ko every time nag-attend ka, ganyan ang outfit mo. Okay. Ay. Yes, Jojo. Sir, I, uh, about sa Kwanser, sa product and process, uh, Day task or assessment, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, sa, if we say kasi sa product, sir, uh, we are more on the product or the result of the task, sir. Does it mean that we set aside or hindi na natin kinecheck yung process, sir? And in the process, sir, we said na we are more on the process than on the product. It doesn't mean that we are more on checking the process mm -hmm. then kahit wrong yung product sir or but, uh, yeah as i have said a while back that's a decision that you have to make as a teacher should i have to evaluate the process or should i have to evaluate the product or should i have to evaluate both nakadepende doon sa learning outcome mo pa rin nakadepende nakaangkla pa rin siya doon sa bunga ng pagkatuto mo at nakaangkla pa rin siya doon sa doon sa kahalagahan ng gawain pagkatuto halimbawa yung sabi ko nga kanina Kung ang papagawa mo naman sa kanya ay gumawa ng isang gumawa ng isang uh, ng isang mind map para may pakita yung pagkaunawa niya doon sa tinal uh, tinalakay mong paksang aralin. Hindi na mahalaga sa iyo kung paano nila ginawa ang mind map, tama? Ang mahalaga na ngayon ay yung mind map mismo na may pakita nila yung connection ng mga konseptong tinalakay mo. So, ibig sabihin nakadepende pa rin doon sa 
uh, learning outcome mo sa bunga ng pagtatuto mo at doon sa gawain pagkatuto na kailangan nilang kompletuhin. Kailangan ko ba bang alamin? Kailangan ko ba sukatin kung paano nila ginawa ang mind map? O yung mind map mismo nagpapakita na mismo nung kanilang pagkaunawa doon sa talakayan na ginawa ko sa klase. Kung halimbawa, kung halimbawa ang ang activity mo o gawain pagkatuto mo ay makapag maka 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 mungkahi ang mga mag-aaral ng isang action plan ng isang solusyon para sa isang uh, para sa isang uh, problemang pangkalikasan o suliraning pangkalikasan baka mahalaga din na tignan mo kung paano nila paano sila nakarating doon sa mungkahin iyon kung paano nila nabuo yung mungkahin iyon so kung tignan mo kung paano nila nabuo yung mungkahin iyon kung base ba yung mungkahin iyon sa isang pananaliksik na ginawa ng mga mag-aaral di ibig sabihin ay mahalaga sa iyo yung proseso pero mahalaga rin sa iyo yung produkto okay kung halimbawa ay teaching demonstration okay teaching demonstration ang task at titingnan mo kung paano Okay, kung paano magturo ang guro. Ang titignan mo na ngayon ay yung proseso. Dahil mas mahalaga yung proseso dun sa nasabing, dun sa nasabing uh, learning outcome mo that you check whether the, the, the student teacher knows how to explain the lesson well. Okay, meron siyang refinement habang nidi-discuss and others. You're already uh, valuing the process rather than the product already. Okay? So nasa pagdedesisyon ng isang guro kung ano yung mahalaga kung titignan ba niya talaga ang proseso o titignan niya ang produkto o di kaya titignan ang dalawa. Pero sa pagdedesisyon na iyan ay nakaangkla ka dapat lagi doon sa learning outcome mo o bunga ng pagkatuto mo. Maliwanag ba ang aking pagpapaliwanan, Jobert? Jobert? Ha? Narinig mo? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, ganun yun, no? Nakadepende talaga doon sa bunga ng pagkatuto doon sa learning outcomes pa rin. Sa pagdedesisyon mo kung anong susukatin mo, yung proseso ba o yung produkto ba. Pero sinabi ko nga kanina, may mga pagkakataon na mahalaga ang isa kaysa sa isa. Meron din pagkakataon na mahalaga ang dalawa. Okay? Yes, sir. That's why, sir, Kwan lang. Share lang, sir. That's why, sir, yung Kwan. Uh, this is our lesson din kasi, sir, sa Kwan. Saan ba? A teaching approach yes, yata, sir, in social study. That's why, sir, palaging sinasabi na Kwan, the learning task should always, uh, learning task and assessment should always be aligned with our learning outcomes, sir. That's true. And, sir. Kaya ang sabi natin noon, ang learning outcomes ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat ng bahagi, okay, sa lahat ng bahagi ng, 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 ng prosesong pagtuturo at pagkatuto. Kasi kahit yung pagtuturo mo, kahit yung pagkatuto ng mga mag-aaral mo ay laging nakaangkla diyan sa learning outcome, diyan sa bunga ng mga bunga ng pagkatuto. At yung mga at yung mga gawain pagkatuto, learning tasks, yung mga yung mga resources na gagamitin mo, mga sanggunyan na gagamitin mo, yung mga yung mga uh, materyales sa pagkatuto at yung learning plan mo mismo, yung banghay aralin mo mismo, itong mga ito ay nakadepende lagi sa mga bunga ng pagkatuto. Ganun kahalaga ang bunga ng pagkatuto. Okay, kaya nga ito dapat yung first skill na dapat matutunan ng gurong tulad ninyo. Kung paano gumawa ng magandang bunga ng pagkatuto o mga pangungusap na napapakita ng mga bunga ng pagkatuto. Tinuruan ba kayo kung paano? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Okay. So may we now continue or any other question or clarification? Wala na. Okay, then. Mary Joy, meron ko Mary Joy. Tanong, Benjamin. Romulo. Okay. So may we continue then our discussion. May we now proceed to Okay, may we now proceed to this part. Okay, ito. Natin ngayon ito. Now, the question now is, how can I create an authentic performance task that fosters understanding? 
This is answered by this. We have to make use of the GRASPS model to assist in the creation of this authentic performance task. And as we have said, the GRASPS model is developed by the same experts who proposed or who developed the understanding by design curriculum or backwards design curriculum. Who are these people? Who are these experts? Jay Makti and Grant Wiggins. Sabi nila, so sa kanilang backwards design curriculum, everything has to start at the end in mind. Meaning to say, we start with the outcome. Yun ang sabi ng backwards curriculum, backwards design. Magsisimula lagi tayo doon sa gusto talaga nating marating ng ating mga mag-aaral. Gusto talaga nating makamit ng ating mga mag-aaral. Yung mga competencies, yung mga, kah yung mga kakayahan na kailangan nilang matutunan, doon tayo magsisimula. Ano ba yung nais nating gawin nila? Yung kanilang maipakita bilang ebidensya na kanilang pagkatuto, bilang ebidensya na kanilang pagkunawa. Okay? And because they are talking about evidences of learning, they're talking about uh, they're talking about something that would show how far or how deep and how how broad students have understood the lesson pumasok na yun si performance based assessment pero sabi nila but not all performance based assessment are authentic hence they propose the grasps model okay to assist in the creation of authentic performance task. Okay, so this chart shows the GRASP model. Okay, G stands for goal. And, and this part answers the question, what task do I want the students to achieve? We are referring here to performance competencies. Answering this question will lead us to will lead us to specify our learning outcomes or performance outcomes. For example, this one, second sentence. The goal is to determine current deforestation conditions and possible future trends. This is the performance outcome or the goal using the GRASP model. Okay? R stands for role. Please take note that um, providing anticipated role for students while doing the activity is one way to prepare them in the world of work. Okay? In the world of work. Something to prepare them or to excite them of what lies of what lines uh, of what lies of them after schooling or after finishing uh, their degrees or finishing their education. Kaya nga sabi natin, schools serve as an institution of anticipated socialization. Ano yung anticipated socialization? That we prepare them, okay, in the roles that they would partake, in the roles that they would do in the, in, in the next stage of their life after schooling. This part answers the question, what is the student's role in the task? Look at the goal. So kanyang role ngayon ay student is a member of a team of investigative scientists because they would be uh, in determining the current deforestation they have to investigate they have to read articles they have to look into videos okay showing okay these conditions these environmental conditions a is for audience who is the student's target audience for whom is the activity okay the target audience is the united nations subcommittee okay on environment Situation, what is the context or challenge? The scenario, inform the United Nations Subcommittee of the effects of deforestation on the Papua, on, on the Papua New Guinea Guinean rainforest and convince them to follow the recommended action plan. So ito yung konteksto. Ito yung challenge sa kanilang gagawin. And out of this challenge, what product or performance should they have to submit? Or should they have to complete? It answers the question, what will students create, develop, or demonstrate? The product is a clear and complete action plan as regards, okay, as regards deforestation conditions and possible future trends, okay, as experienced by Papua New Guinea rainforests. Okay, and S 
refers to, sorry, NS refers to standards. On what criteria will learning output be evaluated? The standards by which the product will be judged are detailed and fully supported recommendations and action plan that is both clear and complete. The action plan has to be clear and complete. That's it. But of course, it's not just a merely statement. This is now the time after identifying these standards, now the time that you convert these standards into a rubric, whether it's holistic rubric or analytic rubric. Again, you make use of holistic rubric if it is a major requirement to end, okay, to culminate, okay, the course or the subject. But if it is, if the if the grasp is about uh, is about a is a task to prepare them of the culmination of the culmination of the subject, then you have to make use of analytic rubric because we said analytical rubric or analytic rubric are okay for formative assessments, while uh, holistic rubrics are okay for summative assessment. Okay, so this is an example of the GRAS model. Okay. Any question on this? This is social science example. Okay, uh, mag, mag English example ba tayo or mate example? Mag mate example ba tayo? Gusto nyo? English. Ah, English? Ah, sige, mag English tayo. Sabihin. Okay. Mag English tayo. Okay, ito. For English. Sorry. Okay, English. <laughs> Ang goal natin sa English halimbawa ay the goal is to uh, the goal is to demonstrate. Okay? Demonstrate um demonstrate advanced okay demonstrate advanced understanding of the different parts of speech okay demonstrate advanced understanding of the different parts of speech okay anong role nila as a writer Okay, a student is a member, uh, is a writer of, uh, is a writer of, uh, a writer of a e-news site, okay, uh, uh, a writer of a news site, should I say, a member, a writer of a news site, okay, a writer of a news site. Ngayon, or, kung ba sa news site, meron ba tayong tatawag na ano na... I have a site na lang or blogger sir. Ha? Huh? Blogger? Blogger. Blogger pwede rin pero ano yung tawag dun sa ano dun sa for example rappler ang tawag din sa mga yan. No site yan, di ba? Publication. Publication. <laughs> New site, okay. yes sir. New site, okay. A uh, student is a writer, is a, is a contributor. Sabi na natin, a contributor, a contributor or a writer of a new site. Okay. Ang audience niya halimbawa ay, kasi it's a news site, ang audience niya ay, the target audience are, okay, the target audience are virtual, okay, virtual uh, citizens, okay, virtual citizens, virtual citizens, ibig sabihin ito yung mga online, ano, online viewers and others, okay, so ganun, virtual, uh, virtual citizens, okay, or anyone anyone uh, who's active in uh, social um, uh, uh, who's active in the online platform okay 
yun ang iyong target audience. Ang situation ay ganito. The scenario is, as an advance, okay, as an advance, uh, as a writer, okay, as a writer, um, you have that skill, okay, you have that skill to make use of your pen, okay, to, uh, to, mod, uh, to, to make use of your pen to advocate, okay, to do, to do a sincere advocacy on a select, uh, on a select, um, on a select uh, social issue, okay, in the community. As a writer then, okay, as a writer then, you are to, okay, as a writer, you make use, uh, as a writer, you are to write, okay, an article for publication in a children's uh, in, in, in a children's news site, for example, in a children's uh, ma magazine site, lang. in a children's magazine site, okay, that defines child labor. Okay, so ulitin natin yung role natin kanin dito, a contributor to, a ma to, a e ma to an e-magazine site. Okay, so ngayon ang, ang situation ay, dahil magaling kang writer ka na ito, magaling kang writer, contributor ka, okay, you have the power, you have that skill to write articles or to write publications, for example, to write publications or articles uh, discussing a certain advocacy. Okay. And now, as, as, as a writer, you are asked or you are required to write something about child labor, okay, and publish it in an e-magazine site. Okay. So that's, uh, that's your situation. Your performance or product, your product then is an article. Tama? Your product is an article. Ngayon sa standards mo, okay, you check the goal. Di ba sabi natin, advanced, okay? Demonstrate advanced understanding of the different parts of speech. So may kasi din sa article mo dapat, ay makikita natin, okay, makikita natin yung tamang gamit, okay? Kompleto dapat yung mga gamit ng mga different parts of speech dun sa article mo. Okay? Tapos isali mo na rin yung, isali mo na rin yung uh, other 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 criteria okay for example the standards by which the product will be judged okay include uh, include uh, clarity of thoughts include use of the different uh, completeness of the uh, completeness of the parts of speech used in the article okay the ability of the article to inspire uh, to inspire uh, to inspire individuals okay as regards uh, as regards uh, the advocacy being presented in the write up or in the publication. Okay, tapos gawa ka na ng rubric, holistic or analytic to, uh, as, as a scoring tool to uh, assign score to the performance task or to the task or, or yeah, performance task of your students. Okay, klaro ba example natin sa English? Yes, sir. Okay. Sa MAPE naman, mag-example tayo? Sige, sir. Okay, sa MAPE. Teka lang, mag-isip lang ako sa glit. Okay, ganito. Ano mga subjects sa MAPE pala? Health, uh, ano pa? Ay, PE kayo, no? physical education, no? Ano mga ano dyan? Ah, ganun, halimbawa. Um, eto, MAPE. The goal is to promote, okay? The goal is to promote healthy lifestyle among healthy lifestyle among youth of the community. Okay. Anong role nila? Okay. Students, okay. Students, stud, uh, the, the, the uh, students will serve as health advocates. health advocates and sports enthusiasts. Okay, dalawa na lang. Kasi pwede natin dagdagan yung goal natin na to promote healthy lifestyle through sports. Okay, so sila ay health advocates at the same time sports enthusiasts. Ang audience sila ay youth of the community. Okay, situation, okay, ang situation ay ganito. Um, 
most of the youth of the community based on the data presented by the barangay health workers are of obese health status or obese daw health status okay as as a sports enthusiast and health advocate implement okay implement a program okay to address or implement a program to campaign for healthy lifestyle in the said community. Kung anong product mo? Perform, product yan, product yan, hindi siya performance. Anong product? Okay? A healthy, uh, a health plan. Okay? A health plan is for a health, uh, a health, a health plan or a sports plan na lang, a health plan, a health sports plan for the community. Okay? Yan ang standards mo. It has to address, for example, it has to address the the obese, uh, the, the, the profile or the health profile of the of the youth of the community. Okay? The program can be can can be replicated. The the health plan could be could be implemented easily and others. Okay? So yun yung inyong success indicators or standards. So that's an example in PE. Claro? Yes, sir. Okay. Kasi sa first performance task ninyo, by midterms, gagawa kayo ng mga samples na ganito. Okay? Individual po. Okay? Hindi po siya. Kasi ginawa namin yung per team noon, no? Noong assessment one. So for, for this time, uh, individual po na gagawin ninyo. Okay? Mahirapan ako mag-check, pero uh, kailangan natin gawin para makita ko kung naunawaan ba ninyo na mabuti ang ating talakayan. Okay? Okay, other other prompts, okay, which you, you, you can use, okay, prompts which you can use when you design, when you design the, um, the performance, uh, the, the grasp. Okay, pwede nyo to, mga to, mga prompts na gagamitin ninyo. Goal, your task is to, the goal is to, the problem or challenge is, the obstacle to overcome is, role you are, you have been asked to, your job is, audience, your clients are, the target audience is, you need to convince, situation, the context you find yourself is, the challenge involves dealing with, okay, product, performance, you will create in order to, you need to develop a blank so that, Okay, ito mga standards. So, pwede nyo gamitin itong mga prompts na ito. Pero, syempre, mas maganda kung yung words ay galing mismo sa inyo. Pero kung starter pa lang kayo, you're, you're, you're still starting of doing the grass, you can make use of this as your guide. Okay, any more question on this? Wala na, sir. Okay, now, allow me now to explain to you, okay, the prelim examination. Okay lang ba na-explain ko o hindi na? Okay lang, sir. Okay lang, sir. Okay lang, sir. Okay lang, sir. And Mr. Kerin, sir, Char. I-upload ko ito later lahat. I-upload ko itong presentation later sa ating ano, LMS para pag-reviewan ninyo. Yung dalawang PowerPoint. Okay. Now, we proceed to, okay, hindi ko na kailangan ipakita, no? Okay. There are, uh, for your exam, for your prelim exam, one, two, three, four. There are four test types. Okay. The first test type is multiple choice, 40 items, one point each, 40 points. Okay? 40 points. Example of a question is this. Which of the following is not an example of performance assessment? A. Playing the piano. B. Solving a practical math problem. C. Completing a multiple choice test. D. All of the above are examples. Okay, bahala na kayo sumagot dyan. Example ng multiple choice. One answer only. The next is alternative response. Ten items, one point each, ten points. So you just have to study and identify whether each of the statements below is true or false. Example. Traditional assessment is designed on criterion reference measure to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the learners. True or false? 
Okay? That's an example of alternative response. Next is multiple response tests. 10 items, 2 points each because there are 2 answers for each question, 20 points. Example, which of the following scoring system, which of the following scoring system is useful for use with performance-based and authentic assessments? A, norms, B, analytic rubrics, C, anecdotal records, D, holistic rubrics. Two answers. Okay, dalawang sagot dapat sa multiple response test. And last test type is identifying authenticity of performance-based assessment. 15 items, 2 points each, 30 points. So there are activities, for example, there are, there are learning tasks, uh, performance tasks mentioned in the items, and you just have to identify whether the task is authentic or inauthentic. Though all are performance-based assessments, only that you classify whether it's authentic or inauthentic. For example, create a mind map to show conceptual understanding. Ano yan? Authentic, inauthentic. Hello? Ay, buhay pa kayo? Hello? Yes, sir. O, ano yun? Authentic, inauthentic? Ano sagot doon? Create a mind map to show conceptual understanding. Ano siya? Baka inauthentic, sir. Bakit inauthentic? Tama ba, sir? <laughs> ah? Almira, tama ba yun, Almira? Inauthentic ba siya? Sir, I think so, sir. Oh, authentic. bakit Almira? Okay, um, it's not related to real life, yung, yung, yung activity. Okay, does that really uh, cater to the context of reality of the learners, tama? But, okay, it's an opportunity for the learners to demonstrate their understanding about a certain concept. So, it is performance-based pa rin siya, pero inauthentic. Okay, very good, Almira. Okay, gusto niyo pa na example? Sir, na hati-hati yes, exam. Ha? Na hati-hati. ba ng ganon? Hindi sana, sir. Yung ano lang, yung isang straight na lang? Okay na, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Makikita naman namin doon, sir, kung two points, ganon-ganon, ah, sir. Sige, i-ask one na lang natin. Kasi, ano, yeah, yes, I also sir. observed that. Kasi you requested that before, di ba, na hati-hati in. Ngayon, gusto nyo naman ninyo pagsamasamahin na because I also observed last, ano, last uh, SEM, an observed ko is it would still take time for you, no, to, ano, to, to shift to another, di ba? And that would, that, and that, uh, the time is counted pa man din, di ba? So better yes, than time. Sure. Okay, so anyway, anyway, next thing ko naman sa inyo kung paano sagutin, di ba? So at least alam na ninyo kung paano later. Yes. Okay. So yes, one na natin. Romel, may ano yes, pa sure. ako? Romel. Walang tanong si Romel. Okay. Okay then. So it's uh, 5.56. Thank you for attending our our session for our last session prior to the prelim exam. I hope that um, I hope that you really I hope that you would uh, you would really prepare well for the major examination. Uh, there is a question here. Um, from Jinky Garcia. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, pwede po bang mag-take ng quiz, sir? Nag-brown out po kasi dito kahapon, sir. Which quiz, uh, no? Which quiz, Jinky? Jinky, which quiz did you miss? Yung kahapon yata, sir. Kahapon, oh, sige. I'll open uh, yung kahapon and even yung first quiz. Please inform your classmates, okay, those who were not able to take it, to take it 
uh, mamayang ano siguro i-open ko siya ng darating ako sa bahay ng mga alas uh, siguro alas 7 ko na i-open okay lang 7 to 8:30 okay so you tell them to ano to log in and complete the two pieces okay Okay then. So no one's responding already. So may we have Yes sir. Thank you sir. May we have the closing prayer and uh, would it be okay that Romel will lead us the closing prayer? Romel? Romel? Okay, si Isaiah na lang ngarod. Isaiah, please lead us the closing prayer. Nag-volunteer si Isaiah. Isaiah? Isaiah? Okay. Isaiah is not responding. May we have then uh, Jovins. Jovins? Sir? Uh, closing prayer, adding ko. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the learnings uh, we receive. Um, we hope that these learnings will be assimilated by us. And um, thank you for the opportunity to meet virtually again. And please, uh, please bless our our teacher and my classmates to review well. For the examination. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jovins, for the authentic prayer because it uh, it stimulated the interest of the class. Okay? So thank you for attending and see you next week after the prelim examination for the discussion of your first performance task for midterms. Okay? So God bless and enjoy the day.